Looking for inspiring destinations, incredible places to stay, and the most exciting bucket list experiences to travel to next? Welcome to Destination Everywhere with hospitality and travel entrepreneurs Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. Having traveled to over 100 countries, Todd and Andy bring you unique perspectives with celebrities in the know, hospitality experts, and native connoisseurs to discover must-dos and inspirational destinations to plan your next trip for business or pleasure. So pack your bags and get ready as we bring you Destination Everywhere with Todd and Andy. If your bucket list includes playing the didgeridoo, the Great Barrier Reef, seeing the Sydney Opera House, or visiting Federation Square or the Queen Victoria Market in Melbourne, this is the episode to whet your appetite. Between the Pacific and Indian Oceans is the land down under, the world's smallest continent and largest island. Whether the nightlife and shopping, sightseeing, or water sports, visitors come to Australia every year to explore all it offers. Explore Aboriginal heritage, history, and culture in several art galleries and museums, or hike Corrigine National Park's dark red canyons to explore gorgeous waterfalls. In today's episode, we will be interviewing Australia's own Trav Bell, also known as the Bucket List Guy. He's been inspiring audiences to not let their to-do lists take priority over their bucket lists. In fact, he says it shouldn't take something dramatic or traumatic to live a purpose-filled life. Learn Australia's best-kept secrets, the best time to travel here, the tourist must-dos, and get inspired on this episode of Destination Everywhere, Australia. Welcome, everyone, to Destination Everywhere. We are traveling to Australia today, and we couldn't be more excited. It's going to be such an incredible show. We have a really awesome guest who... Not only is from Australia, but he also is what they call the bucket list guy. And so uh, his name's Trav Bell, and we're going to be talking about him. But before we talk to Trav, we're just going to talk a little bit about Australia and why we love it so much and the times that we have gone there. And um, Todd, what's your what's your favorite thing about Australia? Well, you know, I, I've always kind of been fascinated with Australia being south of the equator. So. You know, you kind of look at, you know, when it's winter here, it's summer there, and then vice versa. But it's just one of those fascinating places. It's a continent. It's a country. It has a very small population relative to the size. Yeah, it's only like 23 million people and it's an entire continent. So there's lots of open land and open vistas, um, one of the largest deserts in the world. And talk about beauty. I mean, the coastal towns, I mean... That, that's what I really remember about Australia is all the wonderful coastal towns, um, the beautiful beaches and the wildlife. Um, yeah, I mean, the cities are fantastic as well. Melbourne and Sydney, Sydney, the largest ones. But what is really incredible is all the kind of natural beauty. And we're going to talk a lot about that today uh, with our guest. And so and what I like to do also when when we, we you know, go to a destination is I always like to, to Google what movies were filmed there. Yeah. Uh, so of course I did that. That's your favorite. And then some of them kind of surprised me. Um, okay, I'm I'm excited to hear. I haven't I haven't heard about this yet. So let's let's do it. So in in Sydney, um, the Matrix was actually filmed all around Sydney. Did you know that? I did not know that. Good yep. one. Uh, Mission Impossible Two. Ob- uh, that's more uh, obvious. You you do see the uh, Sydney Opera House and in, in a lot of the the movie uh, on the water scenes. Uh, parts of Star Wars were filmed there. Wow. And this one actually is now added to my my bucket list is uh, uh, the Great Gatsby movie with Leo DiCaprio. Uh-huh. Really? The the Gatsby mansion in that movie was actually the International College of Management located in Manly. So who knew uh, that? Wow. I know. And then other ones like, you know, Babe. And there's another movie out there uh, and it's called Fool's Gold with Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey. That was actually supposed to be filmed in the the, the Caribbean but because of weather, they actually moved that to the Great Barrier Reef along Queensland. So uh. along the Queensland coast. So I thought that was interesting. Oh, and last one, you know, there's there's like Charlotte's Web, but there was one called Ghost Rider. And that was actually filmed at the uh, the Telstra Dome in Melbourne, which is uh, where the wild things are. It goes on and on. And Wolverines, I, you know, I can go on, but I'll yeah. stop there. But, you know, it's just, it's so big. And the background is so diverse. You know, you have beaches, you have deserts. You have great cities, small cities. It's it's just yeah. One thing I always thought was cool is because a lot of people uh, think that Washington D.C. was the only capital that was ever 
done as just a capital city, but uh, the, their capital, uh, Canberra, is the same thing. It was actually specifically built to serve as the capital, so it has a, a very um, grand feel uh, like uh, like DC. Yep, and it's actually it has access to both Melbourne and Sydney. It's right in the middle of the two on the East yeah. Coast. And, and it's not a city. I, I think if you ask people, uh, if you ask most people what the capital of Australia is, I don't think they would be able to tell you. Yeah, I don't think they would tell you that. Um, yeah, so I think everyone who's been to Australia, I mean, I think part of the experience is having to take that huge long flight, either from Europe or from, from the United States. And um, it's it's part of the experience, but it's also a very long flight. It can be 15 to 24 hours, depending on where you're flying from, from the U.S. or Canada. And so you have to uh, take that into your plans and make sure that you uh, plan for that because you actually land a day a day ahead. And so you need to be prepared for that. And and in, I think in retrospect, I think you're going to find we, we probably should have made this episode a couple of smaller episodes, and we'll probably do that later on as pick it down. But Australia is just so fascinating. But then when you really get into it, you realize, you know, I just need to spend more time in this area. Or I know when we were putting area. the bu bucket list together for this show, we couldn't even, uh, we had to pare so much stuff down. We just didn't have time for all of it. So yeah, we, we will definitely be back to visit our friends, the Aussies, uh, many, many times to come here on oh, Destination yeah. Everywhere. And, and you know what? I, I do, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about one particular movie. And I think everybody remembers it from uh, the 80s, I think. Andy, do you know what movie I'm talking about? It really, to me, put the Outback on the map. 80s oh, crocodile dundee exactly i'm sure the aussies love that i'm sure I they know. like being compared to crocodile dundee I know. all the time paul hogan in that you know where it oh, kind of really gave you a feel for uh the australia outside of a city um you know really getting into the outback and and you know it's dangerous and beautiful at the same time well i'm excited to, to um talk to trab bell so again he's the bucket list guy he's going to be our first guest today but he's also australian so he not only uh, looks for life-changing bucket list items to do it's actually his way of life and so we're going to talk about bucket list things to do in australia with him so he's got the best of both worlds he can talk about both of them and we're going to talk about other bu bucket list experiences he's had around the world so i um, excited to talk to trav and we'll be right back with trav bell the bucket list guy Welcome back. And we are really excited to have our next guest. We have Trav Bell, who is the bucket list guy joining us from Melbourne, Australia. So uh, welcome, Trav. We're, we're happy to have hey, you. Todd, Andy, stoked to be here, guys. Can't wait. Uh, so excited to have you here. So, so Trav, you know, um, when we were, uh, when we were going over your profile, I actually listened to your Ted talk and I found it, you know, one, just extremely entertaining. You're, you're a great speaker and you have a book, my bucket list blueprint and the, my bucket list is an acronym. So each one of those, if you know what an acronym is, and I hope everybody does, but each one of those means something. Um, and, and, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, they're going to have to go and watch your Ted talk to find out the entire acronym, but What's kind of your philosophy behind this and, and why did you kind of focus in on, on the bucket list experiences? Yeah, yeah, good question. Look, uh, and, and thanks a lot for having me on. Um, I'll share as much as I possibly can. Um, look, I, someone actually called me the bucket list guy about 10 years ago. I, I well, backstory, my first business, I was the, one of the first personal trainers kind of running around Melbourne. I founded and franchised a chain of personal fitness training studios, 300 okay personal trainers working for me, tens of thousands of clients, nearly 2 million personal training sessions. Always loved helping people. I uh, did that for 20 years, but things got on top of me. I had my own little breakdown before breakthrough moment. I um, went through a bout of depression and instead of going on heavy antidepressants, there's a lot of stuff that was going on in my life at that point in time. And Instead of going on heavy antidepressants, I actually found myself in life coaching courses, learning neuro-linguistic programming and social dynamics, Akagi principle and positive psychology and trying to get to the root cause of what I, why I was going through what I was going through rather than putting a Band-Aid over the top of it in terms of mm -hmm. a, you know, medication because I knew a lot of people were kind of on that stuff and, and I didn't want to walk around like a zombie. Yep. So I wanted to get the root cause of my own psychology I found myself in these life coaching courses, walking on fire, hugging it out and high-fiving it with strangers <laughs> on weekends and breaking boards and breaking arrows and bending bars. And, you know, you cry on my shoulder, I cry on your shoulder and you know how it goes and uh, personal development events. But it was actually a friend of mine at the time said, 
hey, why don't, why don't you teach this stuff? And for me, that helped me compartmentalise what I was going through and I summed up the courage. It was the big domino that I had to push over in my life to gain the courage. to. So I, I put on an event. It was crap compared to what, my TED Talk and what I do now. <laughs> Admittedly, I was so scared. But it was like the thing. I saw a speaker and I, you know, like, and I just thought, if I could do that, I could do anything. You know, what is it? Yep. People, and for me, it was the same. I grew up quite shy, but what is, what's the same? People would rather be in the box than give the eulogy, right? It's, uh, it's people uh, are more fearful of public speaking than freaking sharks. So, and so I put on a talk and about halfway through that talk, I shared with everyone and some of them were close friends of mine. The fact that I'd had a list to do before I die, actually written down since I was 18. Right, and not a lot of people knew this about me, and I, I shared this, yeah. and it was it went went from a and it inspired people because it went from a kind of a crappy seminar to a not so crappy seminar, and at the end, Joe, one of the participants, said, "How's all this list to do before you die stuff? It, it's like a bucket list. You're you're like the bucket list guy," ah. and I went, "Light bulb moment, ha ha!" Yeah. And <laughs> That night I went home and registered the bucketlistguy.com and I've been doing that for the last 10 years ever since and literally running around the world primarily as a speaker, you know, doing my bucket list yep. and inspiring others to do the same. The whole philosophy, really the whole thing is founded on positive psychology and that is the science of happiness to help people have more meaning, more purpose and more fulfillment in life. Amen. That's Amen. what it's all about, guys. So I just put this kind of cool bucket list brand over the top of it. Yeah. But essentially, it's positive psychology. What's great. One thing that you did, and I, I thought it was, it, was it, it kind of put it in perspective for me anyway. So it's the grid, you know, uh, you, you, you said what the average uh, age of a, of a man in Australia was. And, and I actually looked it up what it is in the United States. And I think it's 78. And then I started, you know, if you tick off, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I've already, <laughs> these are behind me now, what's in front of me. And, Holy. and, you know, yeah, what's in front of me is actually pretty small in terms of, uh, you know, those years I have left to be active and actually do things that I think will kind of, you know, scare me a little bit, which is, which is always fun. Um, and so yeah. when you did that, I, I was like, all right, you know, I mean, it's time to get real because I'm running out of time essentially. So, but that was, that was just a, a great way of putting it. And I was talking with our producer, Lauren, about this. And uh, I was, I mean, she's got a lot more time than I do, obviously. <laughs> and, and women but live you're, a lot you're longer. You're like 30, what are you, like 30, I'm, I'm, 35 no, or something? I'm, I'll take it, but I'm 48. You're looking me in bucks, mate. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that too. <laughs> but, so yeah, enough about Florida. Todd. Yeah, Travis, right. Travis, Travis, this is about you, not Todd. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> what I want to know is for, if you're the bucket list guy, how many current bucket list things do you have on your list? Can you count them right now? Do you know? I'll top you. No, I've got, I've got about, I've done about, th about 300 things and I've got about another 350, 400 things to do. Okay. Wow. With, with your, with life experience and then with age, you know, do, do you, take off things and add things onto your bucket list. You're like, okay, that's, that's no longer relevant. I, I don't even have a passion for that anymore, but yeah. you know, this is up there now. Yeah. 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 Because I, you know, I'll give the example. I went to Mount Everest, right? I went okay. to advanced base, advanced base camp on Mount Everest. I went there with my dad. That's a whole other story. And <laughs> because of my bucket list, my, my father and I, I'm adopted. My, my dad and I, weren't the best of mates, as we say here in Australia, the best of mates growing up. He's a, fitter and turner, a mechanic by trade, and the same job since he was 16 to retirement, a worker's, worker's worker, manly man, me, his, yep. his uh, adopted son, a, a serial entrepreneur, and he still doesn't understand really what I do. <laughs> the point is, going to, you know, like, we, since his retirement, he actually came on a lot of my adventures with me, and now we're best friends. And the cool thing is, it was actually the first thing I ever wrote on my list to do before I die, is to go to uh, base camp, Mount Everest. So we found ourselves as part of a, an expedition team, 13 okay. people. We're going to summit. We could tag along, peel off at base camp, or go to advanced base camp and peel off. And uh, Dad and I went along to that. But I got to advanced base camp at 5,500 metres. Wow. No, 6,500 metres, whatever that is in feet, don't know. Times but three. It's in between, okay. but in between camps two and three on the Nepalese side, mm -hmm. and I had I was shocking. I had so much like uh, um, my head was. I had yeah altitude sickness really badly. Dad, fine. 
<laughs> um, so I quickly scrubbed, you know, some at Mount Everest off my bucket list. Yeah, so that went yeah. on to a, so we've got three bucket lists. Okay. Right. Three types. Yeah, three. Yep. We've yep. got, we know we've, we've all got a reverse bucket list, right? Which is our done list. And this is what I go through with the TED talk, our, our done list. So when you cross it off from a, to, to, um, to get that overwhelming sense of gratitude, what do I get people to actually start? How do I start people writing a bucket list is actually think of all the cool stuff they've already done on their, on in their the life. Yeah. They're on a yeah. bucket list all the way along and get them to recognize that. And that gives people a really good, solid, grateful foundation in order to plan and design going forward. So we've got the reverse bucket list. We've got the future bucket list, which is typically what people refer to as a bucket yeah. list. We've also got this other list that, that, it starts with an F and it's, it rhymes with truck. <laughs> and there's an, so it's, it's like a, a truck it list. Gotcha. That's all the stuff. That's all the stuff that maybe was on another list and you've just gone, nah, that, um, well, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, completely Mount understand. Everest, summiting Mount Everest is on that list for me now. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> See, see how I self-muted them? Oh, no, yeah. you did good. You, you did, did very good. good. Yeah, <laughs> we don't yeah. have to use a beat. Well, that, that, that's the incredible. First, that, not the uh, first rodeo, gentlemen. <laughs> that's incredible that you actually got up to, you know, the advanced base camp. That's, that in itself is a, yeah. a huge bucket list. I know a lot of people are, a lot of people are probably really scared to do that. Probably a lot of people want to do it, but it's not all fun and games, is it? It's, it's, oh, it's, no, no, it's, no. I mean, you have yeah. to be in great shape. You have to be physically active and, and, and ready to, to take on the elements. Well, not really, because not really, because um, even mountaineers get really. I learned so much. I went up with a full-on expedition team. Okay, went through Lhasa, went through Tibet. We're on the Tibetan side. Tibet's just one of like, but talk about like polar opposite to Australia and to uh -huh. the US. You go through Tibet if you've never been through Tibet. It's the most amazing country ever. It's wow. it's it's crazy. And by the way, and spoiler alert, you can actually drive. You can drive a bus, bus to base camp on the Tibetan side. Can you really? Yes. Wow. And, yeah. and so, you know, but what they say is whatever you do when you get out of that bus and you go to set up a tent at base camp, you can't even don't, don't pick up your own stuff yeah. because uh, you're at like seriously high altitude and a lot of yeah. people faint. A lot of people, you know, don't make it past uh, base camp. But then what we did is we walked from base camp up to up through the main glacier that comes off Mount Everest through interim camp and then to advanced base camp. And that's when shit gets serious. Yeah. yeah. And that's when all the, where all the mountaineers set up their, their base camps to then climb. So gotcha. what now is at the top of your list in terms of, let's just talk about just travel. Oh, well, just travel. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I've done the, I've done five man-made wonders of the world. Right, and I've got two to go, and that is uh, I've got Petra in Jordan to go, and Beautiful. I've also got uh, Christ the Redeemer in uh, Rio de Janeiro to go. I've done Taj Mahal, I've done the uh, in India, I've done Machu Picchu. I did that on my 40th birthday again with my dad after completing the uh, Inca Trail. Nice. So, on the 40th, that was on my bucket list to my 40th birthday to be at Machu Picchu on my 40th birthday. It was very spiritual, very, it was, you know, that was my midlife crisis. Oh, I went to the Colosseum last year, went to Italy. Yep. Which is another man, there's seven man-made wonders of the world and there's right. seven natural wonders of the world. And both of those are on my bucket list. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, and Great Wall of China, Taj Mahal, what else have we got? There's some others in there, but anyway. It, uh, and, and, and how many of the uh, natural wonders of the world have you had? Only two, I think. Oh, so you so you got some traveling to do. I'll go. I'll, I'll go to hurry up. I'll go to hurry yeah. up. My squares. You know, when I do the squares thing too, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> right. I know. You like. You start getting scared. So, Travis, yeah. let's talk a little bit about um, uh, Australia and some bucket list items in Australia. What are some that you would recommend? Um, either take it by region or uh, city. What are some things that when people come to your uh, beautiful country, uh, they should really think about doing? 
look, I, I love this. I, I feel like I, Australia government, should, they should be paying me to be a, like a, a you know, <laughs> the board of tourism here. But yeah, now, you should call them. You should call the board yeah, of tourism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, you've got to climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Yep. Right? That, that's, that's a definite. And what I say to people right now, what I'm saying to people right now is be a tourist in your own hometown first. You know, it's about choosing yeah. happiness. It's about choosing... It to take time out of your life and do it with your family. I would say, uh, okay, the classics uh, do the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which is awesome. It's just an amazing view. Americans and Bondi Beach, you, yeah. you've got to do that. I mean, and if you're any ladies and, and those other, you know, anyone else inclined, you got the Bondi lifeguards. Yes, it's sad, <laughs> but it's it's a real thing. Um, Bondi Beach, which is excellent, a quintessential Australian beach. You got to like where I live. I'm in the south of uh, south of Australia in a state called Victoria. I'm about uh -huh. twenty minutes away from um, the uh, the start of the Great Ocean Road, and the Great Ocean Road winds its way across uh, along down the coast. Uh, to a place called Warnable, and you'll see what we call the Twelve Apostles there, where it's a uh, sandstone carvings, I guess, uh, from the waves. It's really rough down there. Okay. We go down there and surf. There's some huge sharks down there, big great whites down there. So Pretty swim with the sharks. Can that be a bucket list item? Is there anywhere to swim with sharks? No, oh, there's heaps. You want to go to South Australia to do that. You can okay. get in a cage. You can actually go to uh, you can go to the Northern Territory, which is the north of Australia, and actually do the Cage of Death experience. Okay. As well. Now that might be your last death, bucket list item. The Cage that's, of Death. death, death. That's a Cage of Death. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why I did that. Um, the uh, but the Cage of Death, you actually get into a perspex cylinder like this, okay. right? All right. All uh, right. It's clear. Nuh -uh. And, a, and a, a massive female crocodile gets in the water with you. <laughs> nah. It's on my it's on my bucket list. It scares the hell out of me. But uh, now, what know, is that? What is there. that plastic made out of? Do you know? Or, or what is that cylinder made I don't out know, of? No, but the, the, the croc does this. Oh. And you're in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. They're waving a steak in front of the thing. <laughs> so you, a you, you're the you're the chewy center of dessert, <laughs> you're, you're, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that how how that plays out. My dog always gets to the middle of a chew toy. Always. There you go. There you go. Well, you are the chew toy. Yeah, right. In situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Uluru. I haven't done it myself, but Uluru, uh, the big red rock in the middle. You want to Google it, but our um, Aboriginals, Australian mm -hmm. Aboriginals, arguably the oldest, oldest race, you know, the, the earliest, uh, the earliest of our, our ancestors around the world. They were the, they were the, you know, some of the first people reported to be walking the earth. So you go out to the Northern Territory in a particular place called Alice Springs and, and, yeah. and what we call Northern Territory, which is one of our Northern states. And you'll just learn about Aboriginal culture and it's just amazing, you know, like, the, uh, yeah, just amazing. I mean, every country's got Aboriginal culture and, and our, ours, are, ours are treated with uh, a lot of respect, even yeah. though there's some, you know, some dodgy parts, but we really do respect, you know, that, that culture. And, uh, you know, I'm yet, to, I'm yet to fully explore that area myself. But uh, Yeah, so what area it, is that again? So our listeners can uh, write that down. It's a, Northern, the Northern Territory. Okay, the Northern Territory. You want to fly in, fly into a place called Darwin, which is the capital of that state. We we can swim. You can swim with whale sharks. And again, this is this is uh, these are just things on my bucket list. So yeah, that's on my bucket list too. Yeah, swim with whale sharks. So you can do it. You can do it. I'm sure you can do it down the Caribbean, Bahamas, and that's you can do Mexico that, um, actually around here. Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, that's around Cancun and stuff, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can do it here in Australia um, as well. At a place called Ningaloo Reef, which is uh, north, the northern part of Western Australia. Okay. Um, which faces the Indian Ocean. Um, 
and you, and you can also do that over in the Philippines. And I think they're just awesome. Bondi Beach. Uh, look, if you're a surfer, you got to surf all yeah, the. Yeah, you got to surf waves, Australia. Yeah. Waves down here. Bell's Beach is where all the surf surf spots are, and um, kind of where I live as well. I mean, just road tripping around Australia. You you want to have you want to. Oh, there's the Barrier Reef, of course. Of course. Um, and yeah. you want to get here, you want to get here and dive the barrier reef. That is on a lot of people's bucket list. You want to do it yep. in certain parts that aren't sun bleached okay. as well, where, where there's full. Uh, so Trav, what are, the, what are the areas? What are the areas that are uh, still in really good shape? The barrier reef is literally like, it's one of the wonders of the world. So it's massive. It's yep. hard, hard for me to pinpoint that, but okay. uh, that's only a Google search away, I'm sure. But you want to go to a place called Airlie Beach, which is all the, which is where all the backpackers and where a lot of people launch off into the, into the Great Barrier Reef from. That's where a lot of the uh, the boats are. And a place called Hamilton Island is really cool if you've got a little bit more money, and that's all in the Barrier Reef. And one of the things that my parents have actually done, which is on my bucket list as well, is to hire a boat. And uh, and just cruise the Barrier Reef and all oh, the different beautiful. islands, and, and that's epic. And you can actually, you know, if you want to cruise the Barrier Reef, point, yeah. you can get a captain. You can get your own catamaran, and they can cook for you. And you just you just hire out the boat. So get a bunch of friends and uh, don't what have an a sober time. day. Don't have a sober day for ten days. You know? <laughs> there you go. So Trav, uh, a little bit, uh, obviously, you know, you're coming into, you know, we're, we're all going into to winter and you guys are coming out of it. What is the, what is the good season? What, what, what season do you prefer best in Australia? Well, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I'm in Melbourne. So Melbourne, you know, Melbourne um, is the most uh, cosmopolitan city. It's, you know, I'm all, and everyone would say this, but they don't, oh, the other states don't want to admit it. Um, <laughs> Melbourne is where the culture of Australia really is. In a, in Sydney, Sydney is probably a little bit more like LA, flashy and you yeah. know. And I reckon after travelling the world, you got Sydney's LA and Miami. Yep, yep. Um, the Gold Coast is definitely Miami. Um, it's all you know. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Then Melbourne is um, New York, New York, Oregon. Austin, oh, nice. all mixed together. You know this sort of thing. It's a lot more cultured because Melbourne is like New York. You know, like like we've got a lot of the Italians and the Greeks who yeah. who sort of came into Melbourne really early and introduced their culture. So there's literally, you know, there's some of the best coffee in the world is in Melbourne. I mean, if you're a coffee snob like me, yeah, uh, you want to go to this. Oh my God, you want to go to this place called De Grave Street. In, in Melbourne. The Grave um, Street. The Grave Street is, is like graffiti graffitied alleys alleyways. Okay. And they're licensed to do do graffiti. We've got actually graffiti laneway. And so you've got just it's just cool. And now, if you, if and fashion fashion is right up there. It's very cosmopolitan and uh lots of weirdos and that's exactly what you want, right? I love that. Absolutely. That's right up my alley. And if yeah. you want to go out for for you know a good meal in in Melbourne in your in your where you are, what, what's your what's your spot? What's your go to? Oh, it depends on what depends on who I'm with and where I'm you know um, and what I'm up for. But you can do there's some amazing Japanese, there's some amazing uh, Italian. You know, like I said before, uh, there's some amazing just holes in the wall as well where you can get where you can get some random random kind of Lebanese food or, yeah. you know, there's a whole variety of different stuff. And, you know, it's often when I, when I travel is, is um, it's what, what's, what's Australian food. I don't know. <laughs> it's a mix of every, we're only, you know, 250 years old, you know, yeah. in Australia. Uh, that's when Captain Cook settled, settled here. And um, so we, we don't have that um, atypical kind of Australian food, I guess, um, Australian very, land. Yeah, and, it's and, very, very much international and a, lot, and, a, and a lot of Asian influence as well. Yeah, heaps, heaps. And, yeah. and so you can get everything. For me, it just depends on where I'm at. And, uh, you know, one, one thing that we need a lot more of is Mexican food. I love Mexican food. Oh, That's the best. You know, and uh, there's no, oh, there's some good Mexican, but it's, it's um, not genuine and, and a little bit more Tex-Mex than real Mexican food. And uh, it's the coffee culture. It's, it's the, 
you know, going after probably really kind of European flavors and stuff like that down here. Nice. Okay. Well, great. So let's focus on, so you, you talked about um, an amazing that you went to Mount Everest. Uh, give us like three other things outside of Australia that you've done as the bucket list guy that would really um, pique people's interest. Well, you know, it's funny when we talk about travel, I, I go travel adventures, travel experiences. Yeah. You can go to a place and, and it, it be a really vanilla kind of experience. Yep. But when you, uh, when you go to, I mean, have you ever been to Dusseldorf in Germany? Yeah, I have been yep. to Dusseldorf. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. We call it Dusseldorf here, but yeah. Dusseldorf. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, well it's, it's, let's, let's be honest, pretty bland. You know, there's a lot of socks and sandals. Yeah. And, uh, but I went there for the Eurovision song contest final. Oh, fun. How was that? Yeah. I was the, I was the only straight guy there, but the point, <laughs> the point being, the point being, it was madness. It was so cool because this like big gay rainbow event came into, come into Dusseldorf, Germany, which is very straight laced, very, you know, a lot of automotive company, a lot of engineers and, uh, and then come into town. So, you know, that, that was a really cool, you know, travel adventure experience to go to that. Um, then you well, go. We got to just say for our listeners, we don't, we don't have Eurovision here in the, in the States. Uh, we don't either. Oh, you guys don't have it either. No. It's, it's, it's the world's largest talent competition, but addictive, man. I, you, I mean, oh, if, man. if you watch it, I mean, I have like friends in the UK and they're all like, you know, they're all into yeah, it, no matter what sure. country they're from. But yeah, uh, absolutely. that's a really cool. So you got to actually go live, huh? That's funny. Yeah, well, well, it was um, it was on it, it was on the bucket list because it was just like we watched it with all of our with all of our gay friends, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we'd have big Eurovision, you know, parties for years and years. And we, you know, um, my partner in time, we just went, you know what, we want to go to Europe. Let's go to Eurovision as well. How and that much was fun. the impetus for uh, for doing that. But I also crossed off another thing on my bucket list during that, and was because I didn't do it in my first business, I didn't travel that much. Okay. But, but being the bucket list guy, I sold off all my businesses and got out of the gyms and stuff that I had and just went, that was around when Tim Ferriss launched the four hour work week, you know, yep. his book. Great book. And great, I, great book. And I read that. And another thing on my bucket list was actually, I've, I've had lunch with Tim Ferriss. Oh, nice. And, and when he came to, when he came to Melbourne and, and it was at that time when we, when we were shifting to the online world and I, for me, freedom is one of my highest values and i'm sure yep. you you guys can appreciate that feel the same way um, and if i don't feel free and i and uh, i feel that i'm not living tr to my true values you know my truest potential so me having these corporate leases and and uh, you know gyms and all that sort of thing tied to me I sold them off when I got out of the personal training industry, I sold off all these gyms, got them to rebrand and all that sort of thing. And then I, I just went online. And Excellent. when I registered the bucket list guy, I was like, how am I going to, how am I going to monetize this? I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it just felt right. You yeah. know? And the fact is, and, and I didn't do a lot of traveling until the bucket list guy. And then I went nuts as the bucket list guy. And plus my travel was now a tax deduction. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Yeah, because, you know, yeah. like, like, we've Research. got... Research. <laughs> there. Now you can expense that coffee. Yeah. yeah well, there and what know. it is, it's a, it's a hashtag ticket before ticket. you kick it, which is, which is absolutely true. Ticket before you kick it. And so, um, you know, because we've got uh, beyond me now, a, a couple of years ago, I started, because of everything that I've taught, it's really helped a lot of people, you know, um, you know, wake up, stop Groundhog Day, get off the treadmill, design their life rather than living by default, living by design, love rather than just, you know, existing. I really want people to live with more, more intention, more purpose. And so now I've, I'm also a founder CEO of certified bucket list coaches around the world too. So apart from being the bucket list guy, I'm also the founder of this company. And now we've got, certified bucket list coaches teaching my stuff in what 25 countries around the oh, world fantastic and, and yeah. let's let's so so if someone wants to to reach out for you obviously your idea is it's just absolutely amazing but if someone wants to find you and they want to learn a little bit more about bucket list what's something how do they reach you how do they find you 
Oh, they just go to the uh, www.thebucketlistguy.com. And if you're interested in becoming a coach, just go to bucketlistcoach.com. We run webinars on that every week. Excellent. Well, we can, and we can sit here. We're going to, we're going to get, we have some rapid fire questions, but um, yeah, shoot, shoot. Uh, and before we say that, you know, I, I just want to, you know, tell the listeners, you know, definitely uh, check out his Ted talk, check out his website, because uh, obviously we could talk to you for forever. I, I, you're, you're, you're such a great person and a great speaker, but Andy, I'm going to throw it over to you for these. Sure. These absolutely. Rapid fires. So the first question is, have you ever, um, what has been your most impressive uh, bucket list item today? You gave us two already outside the U S give us one more. Uh, to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump straight to Kathmandu in uh, Nepal. Tell oh, us about that. Yeah, this movie set off, you know, it's just a part of the old Silk Road. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a, an eclectic bunch of backpackers and travellers and different religions. And I remember sitting upon this coffee shop overlooking this bazaar and just just seeing the movement and uh, you know it was just awesome having a morning i love i love what i love and you can appreciate this is discovering a really because i'm a coffee snob discovering a, a local coffee sitting there watching the world go by and i remember sitting there having that epiphany kind of moment just going this yeah. is a cool place that's and fantastic. all the different little shops really yeah. cool so i mean that's Kathmandu definitely a bucket list and, and a lot of people don't get to get there because it's so far out of the way so you, you, I mean, you, you americans have got to stop complaining about long <laughs> uh, about long plane rides if i hear another another american complain about a long plane ride and that's their excuse see so, even <laughs> see so, did you know like check this out australians and new zealanders and, 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 and again, with the Saudi Arabians, believe it or not, we've got um, the largest amount of passports per capita. Oh, wow. But in America, oh, wow. check this out. In America, you guys have got the lowest we do. amount of passports per capita in the world. We do. It's below 10%. I, I, I absolutely Destination everywhere has got to be literally like, you should put it into schools. Yeah, for right. To, to teach people a, a, like, how to how to experience the world and how to how to get outside the comfort zone and how to ex, you know because it yep. breeds tolerance it does it breeds, absolutely it, it, you know you, everyone just you, understands you just, you just took the words out of my mouth i say you know if you don't travel you you don't learn and you don't um you don't. it's it's and it, and it does it promotes ignorance if you don't Full travel appreciation yeah, yeah without a yeah. doubt all right next question if you could live anywhere in the world for a year where would it be trav I'm going to do this, and this uh, kind of scares me too, but uh, probably move, I'll do some time in the US, uh, more for business reasons, uh, maybe Thailand and maybe Spain. Nice. Spain's a great one. Love yeah. it. All yeah. right. Next question. If you could travel with someone either infamous or famous, alive or dead, who would it be? I'm going to go, I reckon I'll go back to the guy I mentioned before is Tim Ferriss. Oh, um, great. Really, like, you know, when you meet people yep. and any, what we call in Australia, he, he wasn't a wanker. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, he was a cool guy and I reckon he would, uh, he would get into some really interesting places in the world. And, what, you know, one, one thing that, that uh, he shares quite often is his experiences in Japan. I haven't been to Japan yet either. And, you know, there's some weird and wonderful little nook and crannies that you can get in over there. It gets a little weird probably, but um, at the end of the day, I think Tim would be a, a great, a great guy. And, Kelly Slater, like we mentioned before. Yeah. <laughs> like we just mentioned just the earlier. world with him, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And last question for you. When packing for a trip, what is something you pack that might surprise our listeners? Um, remember, remember, we talked about this being PG. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, look, I mean, look at my AirPods. Uh, look at that. I've yep. even branded my AirPods with the bucket list guy. Oh, that's nice. That's uh, great. Good gift. They can find got it. it. Got it. You know, because I got, I got, kids uh so that's that's so they don't steal them um why <laughs> what do i take um i've been traveling and then i've i've bumped into people and be, and i've said oh yeah i'm the bucket list guy and before you know it i'm like the next day i'm presenting oh yeah somewhere i've, I've presented at, at like at meet like for instance meetup groups yeah. i'll meet someone in a bar and i'll say oh you know how long you're in town for and um and they'll say oh, i don't know i'll half a week or something like that. Oh, what are you doing tomorrow afternoon? I'm, I'm, I'm part of a meetup group or I'm part of a networking group or a business group. And, and before you know it, I'm presenting to a hundred people. <laughs> That's great. That's really great. So, 
So I'm going to say my, I'm going to say my clicker. Ah, we call him a slide. And in, in, in the States, we say slide advancer, <laughs> but, but you're absolutely right. That's a good well, in Australia, We don't even say the word clicker with an ER. It's just clicker. With clicker. <laughs> Well, we got to say, uh, Trav, man, you, you're absolutely fascinating. Yeah, you're a great guest, Trav. Um, we, we really enjoy this. And, and Trav, what, uh, what social media do you have? Are you on Instagram? or you know, Because if you're traveling, I know you're putting up pictures. What's, where, where yeah, can people yeah, see what you're to, doing? Yeah, um, uh, bucketlistguide.travbell on, uh, on Instagram. And that's, uh, that's uh, probably my, my go-to drug of choice gotcha. at the moment. And we you follow know. all your adventures there. Well, thank you, Trav. It was great yeah, having guys, you. I was happy to do a round two, guys. There's a lot more. Absolutely. We, oh, absolutely. we, we appreciate yeah. it. We could do a uh, whole yeah. show with you. So from yeah, Albert Trav, sure. thank you so much. And we will be right back. Cool, guys. Welcome back. Um, I, I, you know, just thinking about what, what Trav said earlier, I thought uh, uh, there was one thing that really stuck out in my head, and that was um, create a grid. And this is something that was on his YouTube channel, and I mentioned it earlier, was, you know, that, that grid where, you know, in the U.S., the average male lifespan is, I think, 79 years old. It might even be 78. So you, you create a grid with 78 spaces in it, and then you circle in a grid for every year that you've been born. And then when you look at that and realize that you are already passed the curve on, you know, and how much time you potentially have left. You're like, man, I really got to get going. Yeah, I've got you got to get out there and do those bucket list things, right? Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's, there's no time. I mean, time is a ticking. Stay at those great hotels, go to those once in a lifetime destination and do those once in a lifetime things. Something that stuck out to me is his, um, his quote that uh, people uh, die at 40 and get buried at 80, meaning that people just stop living. They get, they get sedate and they, um, you know, get their kids in school and they really don't do anything. And I, and I really think you can do both. And I know uh, our family tries to do that to try to have kind of a, a fulfilling life experience while still having to manage all the uh, craziness of, of being a family on a day-to-day -day basis, but you can get out there and see the world. And Australia is a great place, a great place to do that. Matter of fact, the things that Trav told us about, some of them I didn't even know that you can do in Australia. So I think there's um, definitely things we can add to our bucket list from our, um, our conversation with them today. Well, let's start, you know, let's, you know, start talking about bucket lists. Yeah, um, and, my and, favorite part. You know, and I know uh, Trav had a couple of different types of bucket lists, but we're going to talk about that bucket list that has to do with travel and, and those things you've got to go see uh, before your time is over. So, uh, and there's so much to go see and do. Um, but um, Andy, what are, what are some of the things in Australia that you would add to the top of yours? Well, yeah, I mean, like we said at the beginning of the show, it is so hard to choose because we had to pare down the list because there's so many great things to do and so many places to go. We're definitely going to have to uh, come back, but there's a epic road trip uh, to Cape York um, in the northeast part of Australia. And it's a, it's a journey um, to the northernmost points, um, and you kind of drive through all these great different uh, geological areas and um, it's just a great experience. You definitely need a four wheel drive to do it and um, it's really, really remote. So if you really wanna see what they call quote unquote, the outback, this is place to go. Hardly any sales, uh, cell service. If you wanna, you know, kind of be by yourself and, and, and get away from the uh, rest of the world, uh, this area to do it. So that epic road trip to uh, Cape York is a great, a great first bucket list. Well, and of course, um, we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about the Great Barrier Reef um, and, and what an amazing destination is uh, that is. You know, it's, it's so long, the Great Barrier Reef, um, that there's, there's a lot you can do. So you need to pick a spot where you want to see it, uh, you know, narrow that down and see what activities, you know, are around it. But um, there's, there's scuba diving, of course, um, you know, boating excursions. And then another great way to see it is, you know, a seaplane. Um, yeah, if you've, never absolutely. Been a, if you've never been on a seaplane, it, they're, they're an amazing experience. You know, you, you can take off and land in the water. I think uh, the last time I was one, uh, it was in Vancouver. And, and, you know, you get so low, you can see right through the water, you see the wildlife, but uh, it, it's just a, an amazing vantage point. So, I, I mean, I definitely recommend a seaplane if anybody, you know, kind of has that, that desire to kind of do something a little different. 
Yeah. My next one is a, a place that we went called Fraser Island. And this location um, is just absolutely beautiful. It's 75 miles of beach. Just think about that. Where in America or in Europe can you see just 75 miles of beautiful natural beach? Um, and it's one of the most beautiful things about Australia is it's, it's um, its nature is just incredible. So, you know, there are li la large limestone formations here, which just make it a absolutely spectacular. You can visit a, a shipwreck from 1935 that got shipwrecked uh, on a cyclone, which was really cool. And it's great just for a day trip and you can actually camp there as well. So if you're in the mid east part of Australia, going to Fraser Island is a, a great option. And um, of course, probably one of the most photographed buildings, uh, you know, ever yeah, would be sure. the, the Sydney Opera House. And, uh, you know, not only can you go see it um, by water, but, uh, you know, we recommend doing the backstage tour of the Sydney Opera House. And, and what's so great about this, you go, you go just beyond the exterior, you go into the orchestra pit, you go into the dressing rooms, green room, and other really cool spots. Um, and then learn a, bit, a little bit more about the history and, and the performers that have been there. And, um, you know, and then follow it with a breakfast. So uh, definitely add that to yours. Yeah. So um, I have not been to my next bucket list place. The Sydney Opera House is just so incredible. Um, definitely something I think almost everybody does when they go there. And it's one of those popular bucket list items, but it's really one that you got to do. And if you see behind Todd, if you're watching on YouTube, you see that huge archway over the bridge, you can actually clip on and walk that entire thing. So that's an incredible, incredible thing to do in, in Sydney. But we're going to go south uh, for my next bucket list to Tasmania, which I've never been to Tasmania, but my, my father has been and he said it was one of those life changing experiences. There is actually a Tasmanian devil. You remember that cartoon from when we were kids, but there's actually a Tasmanian mammal called the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> that's how he talked. <laughs> but that's not my bucket list today. My bucket list is um, staying at the luxury resort, the Sapphire uh, Fresh and A. Um, it offers amazing luxury experiences, um, not just a hotel itself, but also all the activities that they do. They have uh, trips to oyster farms, cooking demonstrations, beekeeping, and like I said, visiting with Tasmanian devils. So this place is incredible. So if you get to Tasmania, and you want to look at it for a very special place to stay, uh, look it up Look it up online. Um, a lot of people just call it the Sapphire. And uh, I want to go now to the Gold Coast, which is actually in the east. And um, there is the Byron Bay hinterland. Um, you could travel to basically, it's called Nightcap National Park, and it's also known as the Magic Forest, which I think is just a great name anyways. So you can, uh, you can do waterfalls and swim in lakes, and at night you can actually experience luminescent glowworms as they uh, illuminate the caves, which is really, really oh, That's neat. cool. Yeah. Talk about a natural wonder. That's amazing. And something that uh, Todd and I, we've done in Mexico, but we didn't do it when we were in Australia, was swimming with the whale uh, sharks. And you can do that in the Midwest. And, um, you know, Trav mentioned this earlier, um, but, you know, it's the largest fish in the ocean, so it's not a shark. It's the ones with the big open mouth, and they, they feed on the krill, and they get absolutely uh, huge. But it's um, uh, really, really popular there from March to the end of July. So if you're there during that time, it's a, a quintessential Australian experience. Uh, and one thing that you should definitely put on your list. And yep. um, where's that? That's at the Ningaloo Reef. It is. It is. So definitely put that on your bucket list. Um, and of course, you may not think of uh, of this when you're in Australia, but you can do a sunset camel ride on Cable Beach in uh, Broome, which is the northwest, and uh, amazingly beautiful sunsets. While you know Australia is known for its wildlife, you know the camel's not really what comes to mind. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, there are evening camel parades, they go across the beach, you know, you can ride your own or just enjoy the parade and, and watch other people, um, you know, on the camels and watch the camels themselves. Really, really just a, a neat, unique thing that you probably wouldn't think of when you think of Australia. You definitely think of doing that somewhere like uh, Dubai or somewhere in the, well, exactly. in the Middle East. Yeah, yep. but not, we not, I think not we have there. another episode where we talk about the camels in Dubai, but... <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. And then there's another uh, bucket list item that uh, I didn't get to do, but I saw this. and like, we really need to uh, talk about this. And it's a helicopter ride above the fluorescent pink waters of Lake Hillier. And the color is a result of the high salinity combined with the algae species there. And it's a pink bacteria and um, uh, it's called halo bacteria. 
And while it's safe to swim in, um, the lake is only accessible to researchers. So the helicopter ride is a really unique way to see um, the site. And um, Google this if you're interested, because it is truly a spectacular site when you're seeing it from, from above the lake. And uh, there's also another great area just south of Melbourne, and it's the uh, the Mornington Peninsula. And it's not um, it's it's more of a of a leisure um, a place to visit. It's a low key Australian experience, yeah. uh, but they definitely they have you know uh, winery tours, small town shopping, golf courses, things like that. You know, um, you know, I, I I hate to say you know I think of my parents, they probably like Mornington, but <laughs> it's uh, it definitely it's it's not an extreme adventure, but it's definitely a great way to kind of immerse yourself into another part of Australian life. All right. And uh, last but not least, um, everyone has heard of the Northern Lights, but did you know that there are Southern Lights that you can view from Australia? And so if you've already checked those off your bucket list, definitely put this on your bucket list. And these lights are known as the Aurora Australis, uh, like the uh, Aurora Borealis, but this is the Aurora Australis. So that is definitely something that you want to put on your bucket list and something that's not, not well, well known. And, uh, you know, and, and last, uh, something, if you really want to immerse yourself in, in something just completely unique to Australia, is um, find an amazing Aboriginal experience. The Aborigines are the Indigenous people in Australia. Some say they've been around longer than everybody else, but there is a, um, the Laura Aboriginal Dance Festival. Um, and it's been, you know. That sounds amazing. Right. And, and they say, you know, um, you know, they strike animal forms and they do chants and, you um, but it's supposed to be just absolutely amazing. And it's uh, only every two years. So you need to plan ahead. It doesn't happen every year. And it's held in, it's held in the township of Laura, uh, which is about 317 kilometers north of Cairns. It's just supposed to be amazing. They get about 5,000 uh, 5, visitors a year. So I uh, definitely find an experience like that to uh, check out while you're there. Absolutely. All right. So those are our top 10 bucket list items for Australia. We know we're going to be back a lot more but we will be right back as well right after this. Are you ready to book your hotel for your next company event or family adventure? Let AMI help. We have ongoing relationships with all major hotel chains and access to over 200,000 hotels. Why us? We receive special promotions before they hit the open market, meaning significant cost savings to you. Go to destination-everywhere.com and click the Source Now button and let us get to work for you. Welcome back, everybody. You know, this has been such a great show because it's just been about bucket lists. We didn't actually choose a, a hotel destination this time. We'll definitely do that when we go back to Australia. But what I loved about this is having an expert like Trav who made the life decision to uh, develop a life plan around experiencing life so yes he calls it the bucket the bucket list plan but it really is it's about getting out there and experiencing life and not, not getting into the old habit of not traveling or not seeing the world and not being educated and not experiencing life in, in and of itself so if you're interested um in that you know he's got a he's got a great a book called the my bucket list blueprint and we recommend it to you and um, it helps develop a blueprint for you of what you can do from now until you're well into retirement and how you can create a bucket list plan for yourself so i uh, highly recommend uh, Trav's book yeah it's, not, it's definitely a, a shift in mindset you know uh just live for today sometimes you know is the easiest way to say it. carpe diem for sure carpe diem but that, that, that concludes our show this time on Destination Everywhere Australia. We want to thank some special members of our team. You know, we have Chris Jordan, our copywriter, uh, Guy Quattlebaum, our content developer, Annie Fernandez, creative director, and of course, Lauren Campbell, who is our podcast producer. So make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the show on your preferred podcast app or by going to www.destination-everywhere.com. Uh, so we look forward to speaking with you next time on Destination Everywhere. You've just tuned in to another episode of Destination Everywhere with travel and hospitality entrepreneurs, Todd Bloodworth and Andy McNeil. To access the show notes and other helpful resources, visit destination-everywhere.com. Join us again next week for another bucket list filled show as we feature another travel worthy destination. Until next time, travel well and be safe out there.